Brian and Kevin coming to you from the Storage View Lab, and we've got a new product in. This is a NAS from Ugreen. This thing has gotten a ton of action online, and we're now getting a first look at the hardware. Yeah, we've played around with their uh, power systems in the past. They do a really good job on their product design, their implementation, so we're, we were really excited to see them enter the NAS space. And it's a first take at it, and they have a lot to offer, which has been surprising where the NAS communities have really been stuck with systems that are kind of antiquated when they're launched. Antiquated? So I know you're really excited about this. I'm a little more cautious because we've seen in the past that NAS isn't easy, or at least isn't always great, because we've seen a lot of companies out there that have come through with lackluster hardware or underwhelming software, but with the history that we've had with Ugreen and the batteries you've tested and some of their other accessories, you feel good about it. And I gotta say, just looking at the box, and this is very much judge a book by its cover kind of stuff, like the box design is really nice. Yes. It, now, it, why am I excited about the box? That's stupid. Well, it sounds strange, but usually if you see something strange. come out of the uh, come out of a shipping container, it's like, hey, the box doesn't look great, the bays don't look that great. Now, it may sound kind of funny, but as we've seen over the years, there's certain design implementations that when you see vendors put forth the effort on box design, product design, that tends to carry forward through other areas if they're uh, It's a holistic development. approach, right? Yes. So if they're gonna put this effort into the box, then the box inside should, uh, should carry that through as well. So box design aside, what the community is really excited about with these units is the power and the overall system config, because in this price band, this retails, uh, I think around 999, that's not inexpensive, but the competitive products from the main brand, Synology, QNAP, whatever, in that same price band are coming at the market with way less hardware. Well, yeah, I mean, we, on the Synology front, you have a, uh, they leverage in their uh, six and eight bay models, a uh, AMD Ryzen CPU, which yes, can't like the Ryzen family can offer pretty uh, performant models, but well, that's like a four core thing, right? Yeah, they, they leverage a four core CPU that came out in 2018. It's a uh, long term model you can buy through 2028, but you're comparing that to a almost brand new Core i5 that came out in 2022 with a 10 core CPU and DDR5 support. So well, huge differences. It's a big difference. And then when you think about the cores and the CPU inside, a lot of people will say, well, it's just a storage device. Do I really need that much compute power in it? But as we've seen, the amount of apps that people are using, the uh, encoding for video, the you know, virtualization, like all these other things that are being forced into these NASs, the processor starts to get taxed. Yeah, so being able to expand RAM, being able to leverage enough of the uh, CPU resources where you can't upgrade the CPU after it's... Well, after once it's in, it's yeah, in, yeah. yeah. So well, you it, said RAM though, but this is this has got DDR5 in it too, yeah, which is which, pretty impressive. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty fun. Even on the uh, expansion side, I mean, you have Thunderbolt in here, you have uh, PCI Gen 4 for a uh, Bi-8 right. expansion slot. I mean, let's let's rip this thing open and yes. see what it looks like. Because we can sit here and tell you the, the specs all day long, but I really want to see what this thing looks like, see how the uh, caddies are, the hard drives are here. Let's get this thing cranking. Yeah. That little piece of tape actually comes off just like that without having to use a knife? Yes. Okay. Box design, check. Little tape thing, check. So let's see. What I'm, we I'm coming around on this, and we haven't even opened it yet. Ooh, they have a warranty card. I'm guessing it's a little uh, drive bay unlocker. Little tiny key. Network cables. I mean, nice Ugreen brand, branded cables. Oh, with little, leaves and little protectors on top. Yeah. That's nice. So, so These, far, everything's pretty and well designed. So It looks like clay. I'm not sure what that's for. It is clayish. This is probably uh, heat sink material, maybe for the M.2s? Probably, although it's really, really it's thick. It's really thick, but uh, yeah, there are two M.2 slots on this too, which is uh, pretty neat if you want to be able to cache your, your hard drives. It's like there's still something heavy. Oh, it's the manual. Okay. A printed manual? Power cord? Yes. All right. And um, a screwdriver with a couple of screws. Whoa. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. A little a baby nice little screwdriver. Stubby Phillips. All right. Stubby Phillips. 
That sounds like uh, someone's nickname in high school. All right. Oh, you've got it facing you. I know, but we'll at least show the, the Just ports. Just rip it. You're trying to be too gentle. Well, I don't want to move the table either, so. Ah, there we go. My side is ripped. All right. So, let's pivot it this way to start. What do we got there? A little screen? Yeah, it looks like a little dust filter on the back, which, I mean... Here, do it again for the... <laughs> so it's a removable filter that is... Magnetic. Magnetic, which, yeah. I mean, it's... This goes back to the small touches that you may not really recognize, but if you had... Like, we have NAS models that have been in deployment for over 10 years now. Dust is a thing in longer Especially life systems. Especially in here, yeah. yeah, with our open air data center. And when you put these NASs to work, they're normally going into a closet or a basement or somewhere else and have to deal with that. Well, yeah, well I mean, while we're back here, I mean, yeah. let's talk about the ports. We got HDMI out. Okay. I think it has up to uh, 8K, 8K video, yeah. uh, PCI expansion slot, two 10 gig ports, which is- On board. Yeah, so when you're looking at uh, some of the competition out there, they'll do, uh, you'll see one gig pretty often. You'll see two and a half gig support or 10 gig with an expansion card. This guy's got 10 gig on board. A um, couple so, USB ports and then uh, power supply embedded and a little Kensington lock dude there, right? Yeah. Then on the front. Okay, before you even start, the bays are labeled with numbers, which is um, kind of cute, but may yeah. actually be useful depending on what they do with this in the GUI. In the event of, you know, I know they can light up a light, but drive four has failed. If they call that out in the GUI to correspond, that should make servicing it. Now, would people get really annoyed if after we put in the drives, we mix up all the numbering? <laughs> Which we'll probably do by yeah. accident. Okay. So what? the trays pop out. And they've got this little mechanism on the side for being toolless. Yeah. I mean, oh, very I, simple. It slides around. Even I figured it out. Works well. Well, we'll see about that. We'll get to the hard drives here in a second. And even so, it's a uh, toolless for a three and a half inch drive. If you want to use a two and a half inch drive, you have the uh, screw slots on the on on the bottom, which is fairly common. But overall, I mean, it's a pretty good design there. So take a look at the inside because I'm trying to figure out where the M.2 bays are, and I'm guessing probably right under there. there. We'll yeah. get into that then here in a second. So overall, a nice layout for the uh, SATA backplay in the rear and. Mm -hmm. Fairly good layout for uh, cooling. Overall, it's fans, yeah. pretty good design. All right. Oh, it's resting on that. Yeah. Okay, right. so if we go to the bottom. Oh, the included screwdriver comes in handy now. Yes. I'll let you do the uh, work since I'm not allowed to use tools. Yes, you and can break And you're going to pull the plate off. Yeah. Okay, so the screws come out. It would be nice to see captive, but uh, minor grievance. Now, one thing that's kind of cool. There's this little spring guy yeah. right here, and that I might... I saw it actually when you took that screw off, it kind of... Yeah, it might not seem like much, but it's a nice design element where you're not trying to like dig at it with the fingernail right. or maybe like flipping it over and trying to pop the cover off. It just pops up. All right, so I know you see some stuff. What I see immediately is user serviceable DRAM. Yes, and it's in a position where it's not going to be hard to get at. You have your... Um, M.2 bays uh, right here as well, so it's all in right, nice. So you've got two of them right on the sides? Yeah. Now it looks like this is the uh, bottom mount for uh, CPU heatsink on the uh, uh, on the other side of the motherboard. And it was actually kind of interesting. So it's silk screen with Ugreen. And yeah. that, I mean, it's, they're not leveraging something that's off the shelf without severe modification. I mean, it's silk screen as a Ugreen PCB. Board, yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, one other thing, though, while we're here talking about storage is the OS itself. In some NASs that installs across the hard drives, this one has a separate OS SSD, too. Yeah, they say it's a uh, 128 gig SSD. It's somewhere the, inside. Right. We'll try and figure out if we can figure yeah, out Yeah, well, location. that's where I was going to go. You want to try to find it while we're here? Um, oh, it's right there. Oh, yeah, there it is. It's tucked in the side. It looks okay, like so it's... It's either a SAT or another uh, NVMe M.2, yeah. but uh, they use that for onboard storage, which can be nice in certain cases since you'll have faster boot times depending on if you're 
loading off a flash or a hard drive. Sure. We'll have to see how they leverage that on the back end. Others like to leverage the hard drives or storage going in, do a RAID partition across. So it'd be interesting to see how Ugreen implements that. I kind of like the idea of a dedicated uh, SSD for OS. And a lot of people are comfortable with that too, just like a server or like a, any other PC, right? Well, yeah. And it also means that you could probably deploy this thing without internet access. Well, that'll um, be an interesting thing to check out as well. Yeah. And a lot of this is unknown. So, you know, somewhat speculation as we go through this and you'll see as we do, as we go through, we're going to load up the drives. We're going to put the door back on and then boot it up and go through the whole process and, and see what that's like. Um, any other thoughts before we move on to storage bits? No, I want to get the hard drives in. So we're going to start loading the drives into the caddies for this Ugreen model. And I want to show you the difference of how Ugreen approaches their uh, toolless caddy design versus some others in the space. This is a uh, QNAP caddy and Synology also follows a similar design uh, element where to take the uh, drives in and out, you have the uh, little sidebars that clip into place and it offers a toolless design. The one downside to this, I guess, is it's a uh, non-captive design. So as you're taking this thing apart, you have to uh, deal with where those uh, different uh, drive sides are gonna go. The uh, method that uh, you're going takes is the thing just kind of clips in, clips out, and you are good to go. And it's kind of cool, so you don't have to worry about picking your fingernail on each side. You just get a little tab in the bottom, open it up, and load a drive in. We managed to get drives in this thing and loaded. Kevin's going to go ahead and give it power and Ethernet so we can find this thing. And you actually consulted with the manual this time. Yes. Um, so this guy is supposed to show up in auto discover on a uh, DNS uh, mechanism. We're going to have to turn it on because this will not happen instantaneously. Right. You'll go to find.ugnas.com. Yep. And then this guy is going to do its run up and we'll see how it goes. All right, our lights are still blinking, but it has shown up on uh, the finder. Yeah, so I clicked enter and uh, discovered it in our environment. We have our uh, local IP address of 176.16.251.62 with the serial number, the MAC address, the model number, and I'm gonna go ahead and click connect. And this is part of the initialization process that every NAS goes through. Yes. And I'm oh, going... please do admin, admin. Don't show it. Only no! One. Nope. We're gonna skip the uh, cloud connection for this and just get rolling to um, uh, get the initial hard drive configuration going. So there's three different choices for the updates. Uh, no, tell me about them, automatically do them, or only get the important ones. Yeah, and you see this on a lot of the other models that are in the market, and it's important because a lot of customers, as you deploy these things, might forget about them. I mean, usually they're fairly reliable, so they just kind of sit collecting dust, but they work day in and day out, and you want to make sure they can stay updated. For security purposes, I do automatic just to make sure that uh, all the apps get updated in the OS. But I think we're going to want to stick with Notify just so we don't have an update kicking off during our testing. Good point. Everyone else, just do automatic. So the uh, interface that we see here, it's pretty common. I mean, it looks like a desktop interface, fairly, uh, really nice uh, look and feel. And so the first thing I actually look at on a lot of these NAS platforms is how to adjust the fans. Uh, and not just really to tone them down, but during our testing, we tend to like to keep them up a, uh, up a bit. So as we're running heavy workloads, things stay cool. So a lot of people would start by looking at their drives you want to start by looking at fan control yeah all right i generally go for full speed i want to make sure that uh, things are going to be very friendly during our tests okay and, and, and just as full transparency we've never looked at this before we're going through this process dry just like any other first-time customer as you go we're using intuition to navigate this right we're not working off a, a worksheet or anything yeah, so hardware and power generally has the areas. So uh, we'll like uh, my normal deployment process, I'll, I'll set the fans to max, I'll go into power and turn off the hard drive sleep. I, you can keep that on, but I honestly prefer keeping a lot of the enterprise drives going 24 right. seven. I prefer not doing the parking uh, motions. They're rated for that anyway. Yeah. 
Uh, UPS, this would be helpful. So if you have a, even a really entry UPS that has USB control, um, if power uh, if power is cut, uh, you're able to um, have your NAS go into a safe shutdown mode. So any data in flight flushed out uh, to a disk and you can safely uh, have it turn off on its own. Uh, the update or store area, uh, there is a new version of the software uh, detected. Why don't we hit that later? Let's take a look at our storage and then we'll go hit that at the end. Okay. So here we get to create our storage pool, create a volume, and then complete the uh, creation. Which so makes sense, because we're going to set this up for our review. You've done RAID 6, there's all the drives. Now, you still prefer RAID 6 over 5 for this kind of configuration? Yeah, for hard drives uh, these days, especially on four bays and above, I really go RAID 6 uh, now. I, I mean, you can get an edge on uh, capacity, but uh, I don't I don't recommend that for anyone outside of going into all flash configurations. It's the safest approach. All right. And then here you can do uh, BTRFS or EXT4. These days we all go with uh, BTRFS. And with these drives, we're going for a uh, 14 terabytes of capacity. Now. Yes, we have. Uh, we started this thing off with uh, four terabyte drives. Right. You can go much greater than that. Uh, yeah, we just reviewed all sorts of twenty-four terabyte drives, so you can go much larger. Yeah. Password validation to make sure that you know you're about to ruin your data if there was any. Of course, these are fresh and blank, so we don't really mind. Storage pool one is in sync and created. Now the the silvering process, or I guess as it's formatting this, it, this takes a little bit of time, right? Yeah, and that's one area I'm gonna try to see if we can see that. Um, some systems will give you the uh, status. While this is going, uh, pull up the screen that shows the hard disk management. I wanna see what that looks like. Uh, okay, so there's our six drives. And these guys are all at roughly, so they're at uh, 77 degrees right now. Our lab by comparison is at 76 degrees. So, And you were actually pretty impressed when you put these drives in about the gapping at the front of the uh, tray. Yeah, it's designed where a lot of the airflow is set up to go directly between the uh, each of the drive caddies. And right now on full, you can actually feel that air blowing up from the front. So this method, uh, the way they design their chassis, it's rear to front versus front to rear uh, airflow. Sucking from the back. Yes, definitely. When you go back to the overview screen here too, I kind of like the visualization on the two M.2 slots. We haven't used them, and uh, I guess they're not lit up that way, or you get the little the little no sign where you got the blue light under the yeah. six hard drives. Yeah, when you click on a, a, a drive, it takes you into the uh, management area for that drive. Uh, this one, I mean, it is a brand new drive, so <laughs> zero, zero, yes, zero power on time. You get to see the uh, smart information, um, you can also view some of the uh, advanced parameters. Uh, pretty basic stuff when you uh, look at a, a NAS platform. And you can also kick off uh, read-write tests. Overall, I mean, it's a pretty, a pretty intuitive system to play around with. Well, visually, if we close out of here, the other big thing people are going to want to know about is uh, the app store or available applications. So if, is Kevin fires up the app center. Now, this is, again, we're looking at this for the first time. And this is where I would expect Ugreen to have an opportunity to deliver enough out of the gate, but this is something that I'm sure will expand dramatically over the coming months, years, as they uh, roll out new apps, do partnerships, whatever else, right? Yeah, you're gonna find your uh, basic areas, so your security stuff, your photos, download managers, things like that. Backups but, um, in here, which is good. But yeah, there's. There's areas that could obviously be added in here that uh, the model could definitely support from a performance perspective. So we'll be curious to see how this evolves over time. Yes, yeah, so the other thing that stands out in the top right corner, you see the little IO activity and RAM and CPU utilization. That's a good visualization too. Yeah, we can drive into uh, Task Manager, which gives you a overview of CPU. Now, GPU is an interesting one. I'm curious what that will play into. Well, maybe we can support uh, a little GPU in that side PCIe slot. Yeah. 
we will have to explore that. And of course, we're not doing anything on this system yet, so there's not going to be a ton of activity. Um, I guess there's a little bit as it's building the volume, right? Oh yeah, this is the uh, background sync process. Right. So that'll take a little while to finish, but we'll uh, we'll be sharing this out soon to our test. Uh, low gen systems to see just how well these drives perform in this system as well. Yeah, we'll create our file shares, hopefully do some iSCSI work, and kind of see what this thing can do. So we've taken a look at a lot of the hardware benefits that uh, Ugreen has to offer with his NAS, but none of that means anything if we can't get enough performance out of the box. Yeah, so we set it up in our environment using both 10 gig ports. So we have up to just over two gigabytes a second in traffic. Uh, with our theoretical network performance and uh, we took a look at uh, different workloads to see how that would uh, turn out in a, a practical sense. And so Ugreen shipped us six four terabyte hard drives, not the fastest on the planet, but reasonable for what might be used in a NAS of this size. Yeah, they're uh, WD Red Plus uh, drives, four terabyte, which uh, I mean, they're still pretty useful drives. In our deployment, we leveraged uh, the supply drives in a RAID 6 configuration, and uh, overall, we saw pretty good performance in uh, sequential 128K uh, transfers. We got around 2.26 uh, gigabytes a second read and uh, just under 1.4 gigabytes a second write. When we go to our 8K sequential transfer, we see around 126,000 IOPS uh, read and 54,000 IOPS write. Uh, on the uh, 4K random test, this is an area where you're gonna see lower figures, but these are hard drives, not SSDs. We got 190 IOPS uh, read and 316 IOPS uh, write. Pretty good for what you'd find from a hard drive uh, based system. And this does support M.2s and we're actually pretty excited to look at the other system that they uh, supplied with us, the uh, four bay guy with M.2 NVMe SSDs. Similar hardware, but for SSDs. Yeah, identical hardware, just smaller. Yes, much smaller and uh, based just for NVMe SSDs. I said at the beginning, I started off somewhat skeptical because there are so many products in this category. I had a hard time believing that anything could stand out and be uh, really worthy of consideration for small businesses, home labbers, anyone that wants this sort of NAS. But I'm really impressed with the hardware design. The, uh, you know, I know we spent a lot of time on the box, right? And that was maybe a little bit silly, but as we spend more time with this all day today and, and using the drive caddies and feeling the airflow with fans on max, the, the ventilation across the front here, Hard to show that on a video, but it just moves a ton of air. Keeping the hard drives cool, the SSD slots too, and if you uh, put a PCIe card in there, the airflow is going to become really important. So we're gonna keep monitoring that uh, as we test this over the next uh, coming days. Initial impressions are very, very favorable. Excellent build quality. The hardware specs definitely at the top, especially when you look at the cost of this system versus uh, competitors in the category. And even things like this, these, these giant heat sinks that we uh, didn't know why they were so thick until we took the bottom panel off and saw where the uh, M.2 SSDs were placed, Ugreen has really thought through this very well to make sure that the, everything that they've shipped with this, including the tiny screwdriver, uh, has a purpose and is well, uh, like we said, well thought out. And we will link to the full review in the description of this video. If you're excited about this NAS, stay tuned because we've got another NAS from Ugreen that we're testing out. Their little all flash system, which takes all of the power from this, miniaturizes it into this little system and uh, runs four M.2 SSDs. So that'll be the follow-up video. We'll have a review of this thing coming soon too. For now, thanks for tuning in.